good day once again everybody uh thank you once again for tuning in and we keep learning and creating that great content when it comes to physics all right um physical science i should say uh so that's physical science which is composed of physics and chemistry um by the way i know that you are preparing working hard preparing for those final exams for those prelim exams you know wherever you are uh, just keep doing what you can, uh, you know, to obtain good results. And by the way, thank you for the feedback that you guys are giving me uh, in terms of how well you are doing. You know, some of you have been really, really, really working hard and, you know, using the, the you know, the platform to really get yourselves ahead. And I'm happy. Um, please always tell us those good stories about how well you are doing in terms of physics. Okay, and by the way, uh, just please a reminder for you to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't subscribed, A, I've been seeing some of you are watching and never subscribing. Okay, uh, I'm watching you. <laughs> okay, and um, by the way, please, um, for those of you who need help uh, with tutoring, remember that my email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, you can arrange there for lessons and we are more than welcome to assist you. So what I wanted to do quickly was to just remind you of how to apply, um, you know, electrostatics when it comes to two dimensional, um, you know, uh, arrangement, spatial arrangements. So in this case, uh, here we are. Uh, this, by the way, is sourced from the Gauteng 2016 paper again. Yes, there are some interesting questions that I found here. It was a prelim paper and, you know, there were some really, really interesting questions. So um, they say you've got three charges, that is Q1, Q2 and Q3, carrying charges of positive 2 times 10 minus uh, 5 coulombs. OK, so that's um, another one, which is negative 2 times 10 to the power minus 4 coulombs and um, positive 2 times 10 minus 4 coulombs again respectively they are positioned as shown so it's basically what we can see there right and then they say to you state coulombs law in words so first of all you know coulombs law simply states that the electrostatic force or you can say the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the product or to the magnitude of their charge and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart okay so please make sure that you get those parts right okay um right now let's go to the next question they say draw uh, the diagram that shows the electrostatic force exerted on q1 by q2 and q3 so we're looking at q1 uh, um you know the electrostatic force exerted on q1 by those two forces so what i'm going to do is uh they did say um yeah a uh, draw a diagram now so in this case i'm going to just show that diagram right so if that is q1 all right what type of force does q1 experience because of q2 now I want you to please note that's positively charged and that's negatively charged. So what's happening? We said all the time what you need to do is look at the one that they are focusing on. And in this case, which one are we going to focus on? On Q1, right? So we notice Q1 and Q2. What are they doing to each other? They are exerting forces of attraction to each other. But which one are we fo focusing on? So here they are. They are attracting each other, pulling each other closer. But we are focusing on Q1. So Q1 is being pulled to the left by Q2. Can you see that? So it means that this is the force. Okay, it's in that direction. This is the force that uh, Q1 uh, or rather Q2 exerts on Q1. Okay. And then let's look at uh, Q1 and Q3. All right. They are both positively charged. So in this case, what are they doing? They are repelling each other. So in this case, what's going to happen? They are pushing each other away. But which one are we focusing on? On Q1. So in this case, Q1 experiences a force of repulsion. So it's being pushed 
to the south. Can you see that? So in this case, we're going to end up with a force in that direction. Okay, right. So this is the force that Q3 exerts on Q1. Okay, right. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents. So in order for us to determine the resultant force, of course, those are the two forces that they're looking for. But I want you to just be aware so that we are able to draw the resulting force, right? So in this case, what we end up having, oh, and by the way, please don't include that part if they didn't ask for it, okay? So I'm just, I just want to show you. So we want the resultant force. So what are we going to do? We're going to complete a parallelogram, right? And how do we get the resultant force? So in this case, we're going to make sure that we draw our resultant force from the one corner of the real sides to the uh, you know, imaginary sides in a sense, okay? So that's the direction of our net force, all right? Please don't connect those two because remember they are not head to tail, okay? They are not going in the, you know, in, you know, a systematic, you know, sort of flow. So that's our F net right there. Okay, now we can just simply apply, okay? So the next one they say to you, calculate the net force exerted on Q1, right so that's what they want okay uh, by q2 and q3 so all that we're simply going to do just apply coulomb's law f is equals to k let's start with q2 on q1 so that's q2 q1 uh, over r squared so what we that's 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge on q2 that's going to be 2 times 10 minus 4 and please 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 just make it a point you're not going to actually put the signs there okay we just take the absolute value of it okay so that's 2 times 10 minus 4 coulombs multiplied by what is the charge uh, on q1 so that's 2 times 10 to the minus 5 i'm just going to move this away so that's 2 times 10 to the minus 5 okay to the power minus 5 and in this case, what is the distance between Q1 and Q2? The distance is 0 0.5 um, meters squared. Okay, so uh, what would be our answer there? Um, I get an answer of 144 newtons. Okay, right. Um, so that would be the force that Q1 q2 exerts on q1 and by the way where is the direction of that force so we note in this case it's going to be note we said it would be to the west and by the way please note they have also indicated there the points of a compass so that you can actually use that so this is to the uh, sorry to the east rather okay so that's east going that way okay Right, and then obviously we're going to do the same for calculating Q3, um, FQ3 on Q1, okay? So we're kind of going to repeat the process, so um, let's do that quickly. So KQ3, Q1 over R squared, okay? So that's 9 times 10 to the power 9, okay? Uh, our Q3 value. So it's going to be 2 times 10 minus 4, okay, to the power minus 4, and then which is 2 times 10 to the power minus 5, okay, it's actually going to be the same there, okay, divided by, now, of course, there could have been another way, I could have actually just used uh, my distances there, but nonetheless, uh, 0 0.4 squared, okay, and our answer is, Okay, uh, 225, so I get a value there of 225. Remember, this is Newtons, and in which direction is that? That's to the south. Now, we're not done. Remember, uh, in this case, we're looking for the net force. So I'm just going to move this away. All right, now we're looking for that net force over there. So now what we're going to do is how do we find that net force? Of course, it's going to be, we're going to now apply 
the Pythagorean theorem. So f net squared is equals to fq2 on q1 squared plus fq3 on q1 also squared. Okay, so um, that's going to be the square root because remember this is f net squared. So that's going to be the square root of 2 to 5. Okay, um, okay, uh, actually it's 144 squared, right, if we're going to be precise, 144 squared plus 225 squared. I don't want you guys complaining that I substituted the wrong thing there. I know how you guys can be, hey? <laughs> Alright, and what do we find for our final answer? So that's going to be the square root of 225 squared plus uh, 144 squared. And I get, okay, 267, uh, so that's 267.13, right, Newton. So now, this is the magnitude of the net force. However, uh, they said calculate the net electrostatic force exerted. So remember that force is a vector quantity. So we also supposed to mention the direction, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm going to do to mention the direction, by the way, you could find the angle there or this side. It's really up to you. Okay, and you'll see how we'll apply that. So let me look for the angle here. Okay, let me say this is the angle theta there. Now notice, when if I can take this as a triangle, remember that that becomes 90 degrees, right? Now notice this side is equal to that one remember it's a parallelogram okay in this case i can say well i know this side is the same as q1 uh, on q3 uh, on q3 on q1 rather okay so i've got the opposite side as well as the adjacent side okay i've already calculated them so i can use the tangent of t of theta so and say 10 of theta is going to be my opposite side is the same as this one. So that's going to be FQ3Q1, okay, divided by my adjacent side, which is going to be my FQ2 on Q1. And in this case, I take the arc 10, okay, my values. Remember, uh, Q3 on Q1 is 2 to 5, okay, divided by 144. All right, and what do you get there? Okay, and I get an angle of 57.38, okay, degrees. Now, what you can do to just express that angle, remember, you can't just give that and say, well, that's your final answer. Remember, we need to express it in terms of uh, points of a compass, right? So now, how am I going to express that angle? So it means that from the west, uh, from the east rather, ah, I keep saying west. Okay, from the east, I'm going to move 57.38 degrees towards the south. So therefore, it means that our angle, our net force is going to be that magnitude there, right? But our angle, it's going to be uh, from the west, okay? I am... Uh, huh. There again, I said west. <laughs> From the east, I'm going to move 57.38 degrees towards the south. Okay, so I'm using east as my reference point. Of course, if you worked out, maybe let's say that angle there, uh, which is 90 minus that angle there, let's call it alpha. You could have said from the south, moving that angle there, right, towards the west. Nothing wrong with that. Or alternatively, ladies and gents, you can also use bearing. And remember, how you measure bearing is always north, what's clockwise from the north, right? So from the north, if I measure clockwise, it's going to be 90 degrees plus that 54, uh, 57.38. So that's going to be plus 90, okay? And I get a bearing, okay? Or you can say at a bearing. Uh, of it's going to be 147.38 okay so remember uh, bearing by the way is um, you know you don't use degrees there 
you just simply say add a bearing so it means that our net force is going to be 267.1 uh, uh, 3 newtons um, at a bearing of 147.38 and that's how the cookie crumbles hope that you um, you know found this lesson helpful you know as a form of revision and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please just hit that like button if you really really liked our lesson okay and please remember to uh, just uh, make sure that you um, you know, get in touch with us, uh, comment, you know, and tell us if you are finding help. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.